Welcome to Electron Line. Let's take a look at some common temperature coefficient of resistivities for various metals and various substances. Now again, this is the equation that we had to use to find the resistivity of a, of a conductor or anything that's made out of some sort of metal that changes over temperature. In other words, if temperature increases, the resistivity increases, and so this is the equation we use to calculate that. And here is the temperature coefficient of resistivity that we then multiply times the change in the temperature, add to 1, and that will then give us the new resistivity. As we saw in the previous video, for large change in temperature, that can be quite a bit. But what you will notice here when we look at the various metals, that the, the temperature coefficient is fairly similar for the various metals, especially the ones that are very good conductors that we talked about before, like aluminum, copper, and silver. Notice how close these, these, these temperature coefficients are for resistivity of those three very good conductors. They're very, very close. And the other metals aren't that far off. For iron, it's 0.005. For lead, it's 0.0043. And for tungsten, it's 0.0045. So again, not all that different from our other three very good conductors. But then when we start looking at alloys and other substances, things can be very different. For brass, for example, it's quite different. It's about half of what you would expect for a normal metal just by alloying uh, copper and well, brass is made out of copper and nickel, I believe, right? Why don't you me? I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll, I'll skip that, all right? So um, then when you start looking at other substances, such as brass, graphite, and nichrome, you can see that the, the uh, resistivity coefficients, or the temperature coefficients of resistivity, are quite different. For brass, which is an alloy, it's about half what it is for a typical metal. For nichrome, it's far less, and so nichrome can be used to resist the changes in resistivity at large temperature changes. And graphite, remarkably enough, has a negative temperature coefficient of resistivity. In other words, in graphite, as the temperature goes up, the resistivity actually goes down. So that gives you some kind of feel for resistivities and how for most metals they're quite common and quite similar in the amount. And that's how we know. It's copper and zinc. Ah, it's copper and zinc, yeah. Oh well. Thank you. What did I, you say it was? Uh, I thought it was copper and nickel, but it's copper and zinc. Missed it by that much. Missed it by a lot. <laughs>